Hello, I'm Issa Musa. I'm Chair of Cardiovascular Medicine at the Mayo Clinic campus in Florida. We're here today to discuss the recently published expert consensus document from the Society of Coronary Angiography and Intervention about a proposal for a new definition for a clinically relevant myocardial infarction after coronary revascularization. I'm sure all of you know the universal definition of myocardial infarction, specifically as it pertains to coronary vascularization or as a complication of coronary vascularization, including PCI and bypass surgery. Clearly, the group that developed the universal definition need to be given credit because they did set the standards for standardization of reporting and to make sure that everyone uses the same language. However, if it was a perfect definition, we won't be here. The definition, again, began the conversation, but there were major concerns on several fronts that prompted the society and the widening group to provide this document. As you know, the universal definition, especially the most updated one in 2012, defines a myocardial infarction after PCI using troponin primarily and calls an MI if troponin exceeds five times the upper normal limits with angiographic or clinical signs of ischemia. Now, on the face of it, that, that definition seems very solid and makes sense. The problem, however, when we looked at the literature, there's not a lot of evidence that this definition is correlated with prognosis, meaning clinically when we give a patient diagnosis of MI after PCI based on these criteria, there's no data that link this diagnosis to long-term prognosis, whether it's mortality and heart failure, which means we're calling MI after PCI in a lot more patients than we should, and that have obviously implications both for giving a diagnosis that may not be meaningful in terms of prognostic impact. It has the potential to prolong hospitalization, also to probably overutilization of resources trying to pursue a diagnosis that may not be, uh, be meaningful. The other aspect which uh, pertains to clinical trials, when we do clinical trials comparing different treatment strategies, whether it's medical therapy, bypass, and PCI, and we use MI post-procedure as an endpoint, if we're using an endpoint that's not clinically meaningful, that may affect power calculation and may not be granular enough to really give us what we need out of the trial. That's why we thought we need uh, this definition to basically look at clinically meaningful MI after revascularization, that is an MI that there is evidence that can impact patient life in the next two to five years or so. What does this new proposal mean for physicians and for patients? Number one, the new proposal calls a myocardial infarction after PCI when there is CKMB elevation more than 10 times the upper limit of normal, period. The definition doesn't call for association of angiographic clinical ischemia for a specific reason. We all agree that angiographic and clinical manifestation of ischemia is important in general. But when you look at all the data that is available, they did not really consider the angiographic and clinical endpoint. The data pointedly looked at the CKMB level. This is the data that correlated the incidence of MI in that definition with long-term morbidity and mortality. That's the definition in patients who have stable coronary disease without acute coronary syndrome. I'm not going to go into the ACS population because that's a little bit more granular and less certain. The benefit of this definition that would really only assign a post-procedure complication to those patients with a true complication that would impact long-term survival, which means the patients need to be informed about it and they need to be measures that hopefully would reduce the potential sequelae. The second consequence that we hope, in the old definition, very few hospitals, physicians actually measure troponin 
to report the post-procedure MI because the feeling was that that definition overestimates MI. With this definition, we hope that physicians and hospital will begin to actually measure CKMB or troponin because, again, as part of the definition, a troponin more than 70 times the upper limit of normal would also be defined as MI. So then troponin CKMB would be measured after the procedure and only those patients with uh, thresholds or with levels that meet these thresholds would be reported as MI. And then this would be captured in the NCDR registry and then that can be measured or used as a measure for quality. Lastly, we hope that in future clinical trials comparing different revascularization strategies, i.e. PCI and bypass with medical therapy, that would use this definition to define post revascularization MI, because that would be then a solid endpoint that is meaningful, and its use can be justified as an endpoint, unlike the current definition. How does this document align with the imperative of health care quality that's been laid out by the Institute of Medicine? We feel that this definition align with this imperative by being, number one, patient-centered, because obviously we only want to look at things that's meaningful to the patient, and that means that would have impact on their lives in the future. Number two, this would also align with affordable care, because to use a definition that would lead to overutilization of resources without adding value to patient care would reduce affordability of care, at least in cardiovascular medicine, especially with the number of PCI procedures and bypasses that are being performed on an annual basis. We're thrilled that this document is being simultaneously published by CCI and Jack. This is a recognition of its importance to the community, and we encourage you to download the article from sky.org. Thank you.